Kira College Boutique was more academic. Uh, it was more, the school motto is discipline and hard work. So when it comes to uh, sports, it was not easy. Sometimes uh, when I became a games prefect, we had to try and twist the arm of the headmaster to buy us balls, to encourage us to go and compete in the district levels. Actually, it was our year that Kira College Boutique first participated in the post-primary, and that was in Masindi, and we had a wonderful, uh, wonderful uh, squad. I remember Nkrumah was the powerhouse, sports powerhouse, and uh, we were going to play Nkrumah, and nobody gave us a chance. So Nkrumah uh, had uh, Postnet and Omani in goals, uh, we had Makoba, Farouk, uh, Ijuni Sepia. These guys were reported to be under 20 internationals coming back from Angola, so this was an international game. Interestingly, by then I was a striker. So I was playing, and my, my teammates in Mitchell Hall, Sewava, and I said, guys, we're going to concede so many goals. What are we going to do? Then I said, guys, okay, I'm going to play behind. I'm going to be a defender for this game. I had a, a passion for students, because he believed in students. They're easy to manage. Students can can have a rub off to other players who are not in school. So Vida was having, I think, the game the following, the following day. So he wanted me to play. So he played me on right back. So I kicked Sozi and he fell. And he, he, he told the tabula, hey man, watch uh, alone about Mujewa, you know. <laughs> so I came off and afterwards, uh, Coach Pasule came to me and said, Timothy, which position do you play? So I told him, coach, I don't know because I've goal kept, I've played as a striker, played in defense. So he said, the way I see you can play, you'll be a centre half. And uh, I've be I became a professional player as a centre half. Thanks to Poa Sule, he believed in us. By then, when we went in there, I joined the team that had just been promoted to the Premier League, Broomfoot and Celtic, and uh, no one had a clue of what Uganda was. So they were like, no, we can't give you a very good contract because we don't know Uganda. So we agreed on a six-month contract. So after two months, they wanted me to negotiate to renew my contract. And uh, yeah, that's how the story uh, began. And. Uh, I'm proud and I thank God that I managed to last that long. Today we have a challenge that uh, the local league is not functioning. So it's not making, it's not producing many Batavares, Sekajas, the Oboas. We are lacking in that uh, mental strength, uh, the tenacity that was there. Uh, the Vida fans, what it means losing to, to Express. Uh, you don't wish to be in town when Vida you have lost to Express. And uh, when you beat Express, you know, no one wishes to be in town. Uh, going to, to Mbale to play Mbale Heroes. Uh, Vida always we hated going down, down that route. So you, you miss that, but it's simply because administratively we have not made a choice to develop Ugandan football. Uh, Mitchell is, uh, is one person who makes the players to, to get to believe into themselves. Uh, he's one person who can tell you you can climb Mount Kilimanjaro even without the equipment. And uh, with time you start believing that you can do it. Uh, and we have seen that. Yeah, he has introduced so many players into the national team. And those players have not disappointed him. Uh, they have delivered. Uh, Mitchell, uh, his philosophy is attention to detail. He's, he's, he's very tactical and very analytical. He demands discipline on the field of play, not only outside of it. It didn't come to pass, but I can promise you that during our lifetime, uh, we ask the Almighty that He can grant us that opportunity to watch the national team qualify because we have been blessed with loyal fans that have been there through ups and downs. And ultimately, we made them dream. They are still dreaming, but we are yet to deliver the dream. So we need just to call upon the Almighty 
to grant that dream to the to the fund.